Okay, and welcome to this next tutorial. Uh, we are ready to multiply and divide rational expressions. So let's flip over to this page of our notes. Let's first recall some fraction rules. What do we do when we multiply two fractions? What do we do when we divide two fractions? Well, multiplying fractions is the easiest operation, in my opinion, uh, to deal with fractions. Because multiplying fractions, you simply just multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators, and you're finished. So I do A times C, and I do B times D, and, and I'm finished. We multiply fractions across. That's it. We just multiply across. So when we have a division problem, the first thing we need to do is change that division problem to a multiplication problem. And what we do is we take the first fraction, of course we don't do anything with that, but we can change the division to a multiplication by taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. Reciprocal basically just means flip it upside down. So dividing by C over D is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal D over C. And then, of course, it's the same thing as multiplying. In this case, the numerators are A times D and the denominators are b times c. Once you get it to a multiplication, it's a whole lot easier. So whenever you see a division sign, please make sure that you change it to a multiplication by taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. That's really it. That's good recall. Steps to simplify today. What we're going to be doing is, if we happen to see any divisions, we're going to change those to multiplication of the reciprocal. That's what we just said. Then we're going to factor everything that can be factored. Watch out for GCFs and difference of two squares and obviously the regular trial and error factors. And number three, once we've got everything in factored form, we're going to cancel any common factors from the top and the bottom of the fraction, from the numerators and denominators. Again, factors are things that multiply. Things that multiply. That's all that can go. Usually they're going to be in parentheses because they you've factored them. So let's look at our first example. Oh, lo and behold, we've got a division problem. That's the first thing that my eyes saw that we have division. It's very difficult to, un really, it's, it's difficult to understand dividing fractions. So I always change them to multiply. It makes things a whole lot easier. Now, that does not involve doing anything to the first fraction. The first fraction remains the same. So x plus 2 divided by x plus 3, that stays. This division is now going to change to a multiply. And what I need to do is, this is kind of my little fancy reciprocal symbol. I'm going to take the reciprocal of this second fraction. So the x squared minus 9 is now going to be in the numerator. And the x squared plus x minus 12 is going to be in the denominator. Now I have a multiplication. I feel a whole lot better about that. Now I'm going to do step two, which says factor everything. X plus 2 can't factor. That's just x plus 2. X plus 3 can't factor. That's just x plus 3. Usually what we're going to be doing when we're factoring is when we have quadratics or, or higher exponents than a 1. I see x squared, so that's going to be factored. x squared minus 9, bells are going off in my head. I see that that's a difference of two perfect squares. And a difference of two perfect squares will always factor into the square roots, 1 with a plus, one with a minus, so x plus 3 and x minus 3. This last part will factor. It's a trial and error. It's a trinomial. I know that it's going to factor into the two sets of parentheses. You can go ahead and do off to the side if you need to do a different method. I know x times x is going to make the x squared, and I'm talking about the factors of 12. There are a bunch of factors of 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. But the ones that are going to combine to give me a 1 in the middle are going to be the 3 and the 4. If you're not sure, I would be doing this lightly in pencil because you might have to erase. I do need a positive 1x in the middle. And I do know that I need alternating signs. So if the bigger number is positive and the smaller number is negative, that should work. You can go ahead and do a mental check, but by now we should be pretty good at factoring. OK, great. So we've factored everything in this problem. I've got three factors up top. 
this doesn't really need to be in parentheses because it's kind of in its own fraction, but if you want to put it in parentheses, just to, you know, that's fine. This is a factor, this is a factor, this is a factor, they're all being multiplied together. Same thing here. I don't need it in parentheses, but why not? This is a factor, this is a factor, and this is a factor. Now that everything's a factor, we can cancel out any common factors. I see x plus 2, but I don't see any x plus 2s in the denominator, so that stays. I see an x plus 3, and oh, there's an x plus 3, so there it goes, once. I see an x minus 3, and oh, there it is, gone. So the x plus 2 is the only factor that remains up top, and the x plus 4 will remain in the denominator. Well, that's it. I have no more factors to cancel. Let's look at the next one. This is a multiplication, so there's no reason to talk about reciprocals or anything like that. We can go straight into factoring. Again, y plus 2, eh, y plus 2 is just y plus 2. We can't do much with that. The denominator, though, has a GCF. So I'll see the little GCF of a y. I'm going to pull the y right out, and I'll be left with y plus 5. If you're having trouble with any GCFs, please go back and refer to a previous uh, day of notes. Multiplied against this. I've got y squared minus 25. Again, it's a binomial. It's not a GCF binomial, though. This is the difference of two perfect squares. y plus 5, y minus 5. Difference of two perfect squares factors into the square roots. One with the plus, one with the minus. And my final binomial here, that's another little GCF. I'm going to pull out a y. Oops. And I'll be left with y plus 2. You must factor everything, and then we can start to cancel things away. So let's see what we got. Eh, if you want to put parentheses around it, that's fine. I see a y plus 2, and I see, oh, there's a y plus 2. Common factors, one from the top, one from the bottom. Let's go to y plus 5, and oh, there's a y plus 5. That goes away. y minus 5, I don't see any y minus 5s in the denominator. I do see a y here and another y here, but they are in the same location. They're both in the denominators, so please don't cancel those out. You can only cancel one from the top with one from the bottom. So it looks like we're finished. In the top, in the numerator, I've got y minus 5. It does not need to be in parentheses now since it's the only thing that's there. And in the denominator, I have a y here times another y. Well, that would make y squared. And now we're finished. No more factors to cancel. Let's look to our final example, example 7. Whoa, we've got a lot of stuff going on with this one. And we read our problems from left to right. And our order of operations say that if we have divisions and multiplications, we do them at the same time from left to right. So I have this expression divided by this and then times this. So the one thing that I have to uh, worry about right now is to change that division to a multiply. So x squared, the, the first thing is not going to change. Uh, it doesn't need to stay in parentheses, but whatever, I'll keep it there. This is going to change to a multiply. And that's going to change by doing the reciprocal of this second fraction. Just the second fraction. So the x squared, my, uh, excuse me, x squared plus 7x plus 12 will come up to the numerator. And the x squared minus 11x plus 30 will go down to the denominator. This multiply is fine, so this will stay. And that's my first step. Make sure that any division symbols get changed to multiplies so that we can multiply everything. Now we get to factor. Maybe we put this thing over 1, the first thing over 1, just so we can see what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. Now let's factor everything. It looks like we've got a bunch of trinomials. That's not a problem. I can attack those. I know that trinomials will factor, if they do, into two sets of parentheses. This one is going to be x times x. A lot of factors of 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. And it's the 5 and the 6 that are going to help me make the 1. So I've got my 5 and I've got my 6. I know that this negative sign means that my factors are going to have alternating signs because that's the only way to multiply to get a negative. So one's a plus and one's a minus, and I need the bigger one to be positive to make this a 1. So plus, a, plus 6 and minus 5. I can keep it over 1. That's fine. Times, let's see. Let's do this numerator. This is going to be, again, x times x to make the x squared. 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and it's 3 and 4 that help me get the 7. 
So I'm going to choose the 3 and the 4. This time I have a plus sign here, which means that both signs need to be the same, and therefore they're both going to be positives. The denominator, I've got two more factors. x times x gives me my x squared. 30. We've already talked about the factors of 30. This time, oh, actually we're still going to use 6 and 5. 5 and 6 help me make 11. This time both signs need to be the same, and they're both going to be minuses. Again, your factor skills should be pretty well intact here. x minus 6, not doing anything with that. It's already done. It's already a single factor. x squared plus 9x plus 18 will factor x times x. Factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. I'd love for you to um, you know, write them on your notes if you need to, um, but I already see that 3 and 6 are going to help me make 9, and they're both going to have to be positive. Excuse me, 3 and 6. There it is. And they're both going to have to be positive. Okay. So we factored everything. Now we get to start canceling out common factors from the numerator with the denominator. I'm just going to start from left to right. X minus 5. And, oh, there's one. X minus 5. X plus 6. Nope. No, oh, there it is. X plus 6. Bye-bye. X plus 3. Hey, there's an X plus 3. Okay. X plus 4. Well, there's only one factor left in the denominator, and it's X minus 6, which, hey, there's one up in the numerator, so there it goes as well. Geez, I was almost able to cancel out everything. The only thing that remained was x plus 4 in the numerator, so it's x plus 4 over 1. I don't need the 1, and actually I don't need the parentheses since it's all by itself. So if you need to practice some factoring, that would be great, and I'll see you in class for us to practice this um, rational tutorial. Thanks a lot.